Hello everybody and welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Ashley or Ashley B. Lutes on Instagram if you are new here and I'm going to take you guys through a practice my stage makeup with me. So this will be interesting because I haven't done stage makeup in like two years but my show is upcoming in four weeks and six days. So I'm like alright I'm kind of running up out of opportunities here on the weekends to go ahead and practice this. So Let's get in a practice round before the real deal here in like five weeks. So I'm gonna show you guys where I'm keeping all of my stage stuff. Here's our gym. We just got the floor done last week. If you saw last week's video and watched till the end. So I have to officially taken over all of this cabinet space up here with all of my shoe fairy heels, code Ashley to save, um, all my black sheets and all my suits, all my makeup and all my extra stuff like the pro tan that I just got. So this is actually my makeup bag. And I think this one has my lashes. This one has hair extensions. So we're gonna grab these two and play with some makeup. Okay, so here's my setup. I'm gonna set you guys up there in a minute, but here's all my makeup. And I'm actually, I screenshotted some questions from the anonymous and the regular questions uh, on Instagram. So I'll be doing a chatty get ready with me. So first just showing you guys what I have here. This is from Amazon, it's a nice little bag. So I've got old brushes in here. I got new brushes that I use regularly. <laughs> regularly, I never use them. Um, and then yeah, I'll show you guys all the products but I just wanted to show you quickly guys, quickly how I have this all set up. I have um, my palette, my eye, eyelash, not eyelash, eyeshadow makeup and all my lashes, so let's get going. Okay, here we go. So first of all, I am going to use some makeup primer. I'm, I usually, and for show day, I will use actually this Tatcha, the silk canvas, because, oh my gosh, it is freaking phenomenal, okay? Like, love it. Um, but yeah, while I put this on, I'll answer the first question. So the first question is, and by the way, I'm not a makeup guru, so. <laughs> Soft to a really good start already. <laughs> if I don't, I don't need to tell you, but I'm not a makeup guru. <laughs> and that's like way too much. I thought that would be like a single primer, but oh, it's very wet. I'm gonna have to wipe some of this off, but okay. The first question, pretty basic. How old are you? I am 31 years old, but I don't feel like it. I feel like I'm maybe 20 something. I'm gonna put 10 pounds of this on. Don't put this much primer on. Okay, I think it's dried enough-ish now. But okay, I typically do my face first. I don't think a lot of people do, but anyways. Um, so I used last year or two years ago, this MAC Studio Fix Fluid. Um, and this is in the color NW35. So I use a combination of this for the base and I contour with this MAC palette, which is the Pro Face Palette Contour. Um, so I'll use some of the darker shades, lighter shades, whatever, and for other lighter, lighter shades, I'll use this Too Faced um, Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer, as well as this It Cosmetics and Bye Bye Under Eye. Um, and then for powders, I have this Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder, just like the mini size the Too Faced Sun Bunny and this Too Faced uh, Blush, which has these two colors. I only use this one. So let's put on some face. And of course, this is not gonna match. Like, obviously I'm not tan whatsoever, but we're gonna, we gonna use this bad boy, um, which is again, not gonna match. I'm gonna look really weird, but just pretend I have a tan on, okay? Now, before I go into Again, I know this is not the right way to do it. I know this, but we're doing it this way for now because I can't be bothered to learn how to really do it. <laughs> um, and before I go on to the next question, actually, I'm gonna give you guys a little prep update um, just in general so you guys kind of have some context about where I'm at right now. So uh, I'm, I feel like kind of a pinch me. Like, I don't understand how this is my prep. <laughs> Cute. I'm gonna use this Kabuki brush. It's from Amazon forever ago um, to, to put this on. Um, but anyways, I feel kind of like it's a pinch me prep. And what I mean by that is 
it's been going so smooth. Um, I feel very excited about it. And I don't know, I just, like there are some, like I kind of understand why it's gone well, but I kind of don't. So I kind of do because one, I took a very long improvement season. Um, so I last took on stage July, early July of 2021. And I have, I, I dieted last year for a couple months or a few months, not a very successful diet. I realized that my blood work was off. Um, and I really needed to get that addressed. I did, um, and things have been really great since. Um, and that actually does go into one of the questions that I'll address real quick is, um, Dandy Mandy Chow asked, um, other than your coach, what types of experts do you engage with to stay healthy, i.e. nutrition? So, uh, Jamie D. Bernard is my coach. She does my, she gives me macros and my workouts, cardio, that whole gambit. Um, by the way, you guys can see that I'm pulling this down. That's what you need to do. Uh, whenever you're doing your makeup, you need to make sure that it's blended in, in all the areas. I'm not gonna blend it super into my hairline right now because I don't wanna deal with that, but please do that whenever you do your stage makeup. Um, but anyways, Jamie does all of that. Regarding like additional health supplements, I did work with Transcend. Um, they do hormone replacement therapy among like other things like looking at your blood work so i did work with them um and they helped me address some some of the issues that i was having and i'm not going to go super in depth into those like there's some things that you know i'm allowed to keep private so uh, i'm going to keep those private but uh like they, they did help me a lot and the reason i want to keep this private oh, this looks so crazy maybe i should have done the eyes first to like not scare you guys this whole time but anyways, um, this is the reality of what stage makeup would look like on somebody who's not like, who's not tan. <laughs> scary, um, but hopefully it'll look a little less scary. And you can see that I didn't do right here just yet because I don't really need to. I guess I can go over just a little tiny bit. Um, Cause I'm gonna use the, that Too Faced product next to, to do some of my initial contour and the initial contour, like you're, you want to make, you know, these areas bright, like, you know, that's going to be dark. So anyways, um, yeah, so I worked with Transcend, uh, on that for some blood work stuff. And honestly, since then, well, that was like the May time frame. things have been going really well. We reverse dieted at that point and I've been in prep since December. So, since December, um, I think my calories started at like, oh gosh, what did they start at? Like, I think 25, 2600 maybe. Uh, and then you can see I dotted all that. So I'm gonna come in and blend and I'll put more under my eyes and all of that, but with a different product, um, the Bye Bye Under Eye. You can see I put it on my lids too. It's just, I want my eye area really bright. Um, but okay. And this is honestly the part that scares me the most is doing the face makeup. So sorry if I'm scaring you guys, but not sorry because this is the part that I need to practice personally because I've had it happen on stage where it's turned like gray on me. Uh, not a fun time. Cause if you mix warm and cool tones, sometimes you get gray. And that was me. That is why I also invested in that matte makeup so I wouldn't have to mix colors and chance that happening again. Uh, but anyways, so I started prepped in December. Um, Jamie takes a really slow approach in that we only increase cardio at first. Um, so she just added a hit session for me and then slowly has been decreasing my macros. And I started out weight wise around like 127, 128 pounds. Um, and that was a good starting point for me. And I had gotten as heavy as like 133, 134 before that cut that I talked about that didn't go anywhere. And then I got transcend involved and things got better. So there's that. Um, okay, now you guys can see it's a little more contoured, but I'm gonna put some, a lot more contour under my eyes. Um, put that there. And then I am going to take this palette here and this MAC brush that they had recommended, uh, which is the 109S. And honestly, this is so old. I hope that it still works. I hope stuff still comes off this. 
It might be old. I might have to get a new one, I don't know. Uh, it, maybe it looks okay. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but yeah, so it started around, you know, that 133-ish. Oh yeah, okay. There you go. So you, you want to put this, then get contour kind of under your cheeks. You want to be a little bit careful though under your cheeks because you guys, some of us are already looking like Skeletor, you know, like with the cheekbones. So we don't need to go too crazy. Uh, I'm somebody who definitely has some cheekbones going on like all the time. So I, I don't need to, I don't need to go crazy here, but yeah, you can see a little bit there. And this is working. I think I don't need to buy a new palette. Yay. Um, so yeah, starting point was pretty good at that 127 ish. And as of now, for reference, I am, I weighed in today at 117.6. Last stage weight was 114.9. And it didn't look quite right because it was like I got too lean, but the muscles weren't popping in the right ways. So there are such things as getting too lean and diminishing your look. Um, yeah, I looked better with a little bit more fat on my glutes because that made them look better. Um, or it may make oh, my overall look look better, I should say, because essentially my legs started looking sticky, as in stick figure esque at that point. Okay, go. Oof, I think it's a little too much. I'm going to go back and blend and buff. But, anyways, uh, I'm also going to put some right here on either side of my nose. Probably use this lighter color for that. Um, got a little hair stuck in there. That time off to build that muscle is so that when I do get stage lean, like, oh, which I'm pretty close to there, that it'll look a lot better this time around. Like I'm hopefully not having to get as lean, but the, the right muscle's popping. So, and it, it's felt like a dream prep going back to that because, uh, also real quick, it's a concealer brush from Sephora. Um, it's felt like that because it's just been, pretty smooth sailing. Like I did hit a little plateau around the 119 mark, uh, but I think we've broken that. And my food is still like, cause I think we got it back up to the, the like I said, like the 2,500 calorie mark. Um, I have currently four low days, four low days, three high days on macros. Um, my low days I think are 1880 calories and my high days are 2,000, 50 or something like that, which is just absolutely freaking nuts to me. Like, how are they that high? I, I, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> uh, again, it feels like a, a dream prep because like that and then the cardio, I'm, I was doing, at, I was doing two hit sessions at one point with like 20 minutes of cardio, but then Jamie changed it to where she was like, nope, we're gonna, we're gonna do all miss sessions. So now I'm doing six days a week, 30 minutes uh, miss, which means moderate intensity, steady state. I'm just like keeping my heart rate up basically um, through whatever modality I would like. Um, and I do try to keep it between like 130 and like 150 ish, but it does get up higher sometimes. So yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been pretty smooth sailing, honestly. And like my sleep's been really good, which is another question. Um, so little miss iron runner asked, what do you think has led to your great sleep lately, especially being this deep into prep? I don't know for sure. Um, but I think a few things have contributed. Okay. So taking a break before I answer that question. Okay. I feel like it's kind of hard to see, but you can see how dark that is, but I do have lighter under the eye, a little darker under the cheeks. Okay. Um, and again, I'm just taking this brush and I'm just ensuring like there's just some fluidity throughout this. Um, this is going to look a little weird right now. That's okay. Um, your under eye, you do want it a little bit lighter, but right now it's like, you can see the reflection a good amount, but you won't be able to see that in a little bit. Okay. And I feel like there's not enough contrast between here and here. So I'm actually going to go in with the Too Faced again and dab that on there. Again, this is me practicing. It's been a long time, so <laughs> bear with me. It's probably gonna be a long video because I haven't done makeup in forever. <laughs> Not even in like normal life. Um, but anyway, so talking about what's contributed to my great sleep. So like 
and it hasn't been all prep that I've been sleeping well, but the last couple of weeks, I have literally gotten eight and a half hours, three nights in a row, two consecutive weeks. Like, what? What? And for me, like a major sign of I'm prepping um, is I can't sleep. Um, I, I can fall asleep, but I can't stay asleep. Like I will wake up earlier and earlier and earlier or just like get really restless starting in the middle of the night, which is, really sucks. I mean, if you know, you know, it's not a fun time. Um, but I think a few things have contributed, those being one, I've got a really consistent bedtime routine, which has been lovely. I go to bed at 8.30 religiously and that's just how it is. It started in like the COVID times actually where I started going to bed early because I had to wake up really early to go do garage gym workouts at a friend's house. Um, taking the translucent powder, by the way, and I'm gonna put it under my eyes and around some of my face. I'm gonna start right here under my eyes so that when I start doing my eyeshadow, that can, I can fall into this and I can more easily brush it away. Okay, um, and I'll put, I'll put it on my face as well, on the light parts. Um, then I'll go in with the bronzer and such. So, um, just gotta get that nose, chin area, because those are going to be areas that are gonna get a little oily, a little gross. Um, but so yeah, the consistent bedtime. Um, my husband, he's funny. Like he is also like he, at eight thirty, he used to go play video games with his friends, and so it was like. Not only did I want to go to bed, but like even if I wanted to stay up, he was like, nope, gotta go play, like gotta go. So I just got really used to going to bed at 8.30, but I've kept up with that. Um, I keep up with waking up at a pretty consistent time between five and six, um, which helps I think the circadian rhythm aspect of like, my body just kind of like knows when, when I'm waking up and falling asleep. Um, caffeine has been another one. And the part about caffeine, like I, I like caffeine, I use caffeine. Um, but I delay it. And that's an Andrew Huberman thing, which I know, hype, hype, hype. Um, it's, he is very hype, but he's got some really great information out there. And it's like the delaying caffeine has just been a game changer for me. I find that it's so much more effective. Like I don't use it for my morning workouts. I come home, eat my post-workout, and then I use it for work. And I feel like it really carries me through the day. Um, and then the other part of this is going to two parts. So one, nutrition. I think nutrition's been pretty on point. Um, I've been focusing on like with my macros that I have, not making them like junk. Um, so that means like I, like all my fats, it's not like peanut butter that doesn't do anything for me. It's like I'm choosing Brazil nuts, which can really support your thyroid. Um, I'm choosing seeds. So seeds to support. Um, like your body's natural hormones. Um, I'm choosing macadamia nut oil or other other oils that are really, really good for your body. I'm choosing um, fatty meats. So bison and salmon, I'm trying to keep both red meat and a fish within my diet. Um, and then I'm getting some leafy greens. I'm trying to be well-rounded when it comes to the nutrition aspect, which I do honestly think has helped. Um, and then the fourth thing, but before I go into the fourth thing, here's where we're at. Okay, I'm gonna pause on this and I'll give you guys better lighting so you can see it like, again, like better. But now, next I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyebrows. I actually have this like Anastasia Beverly Hills pomade stuff. And I do like to use this. It helps the really bold brow. Ooh, this is old. Ooh. But yeah, you can see it's old because it's like, you can't see, kind of see that it's like separating on the outsides. I don't know if this is even gonna work. I wanna make sure you have a nice and bold brow for stage, because okay, this is stage makeup, right? Like you're not supposed to look like, oh, you're cute, you're going to the mall. You're going to dinner with your husband, uh, with your boyfriend, your girlfriend. No, this is like, I'm stepping on stage, bright, shiny lights are gonna hit my face and wash me out, so I better, I better have it, you know, under control and like be able to see all your facial features. Um, so it's gonna be hashtag drama. 
Um, okay, so the last thing that I think has contributed to my good sleep, this prep is um, relaxing. So I have been much more intentional about laying down at night, um, putting, kicking my feet up, taking care of my business during the day so that when it comes to nighttime, I can chill. My husband and I can chill, do what we need to do, and just relax. So that's been awesome. Um, and I think over the last couple of weeks, that's been just, that's been really good in particular because of that aspect. Uh, when we were moving into the house, which if you didn't know, my husband and I moved into our new home um, from Forever Apartment Life about a month ago. So yeah, it's uh, we're finally settling in and just like I feel more at home and more comfortable. Um, it took me a little bit though. Um, it, it took me a little bit <laughs> because it's just, I'm such a routine person. It was like, oh, it's weird not, like being in this new space, it almost felt like we were staying in a hotel. So that's that's always tough, um, just that transition, but loving it. Anyways, all that's contributed to really good sleep lately, even though I am only a couple pounds off my last stage weight, which hoping that that is a little bit uh, higher this year. And Jamie did say that, I guess I didn't finish my last prep update, Jamie said she thinks we're gonna push for a couple more weeks and then hopefully walk food up into the show. Um, yeah, we just gotta get these glutes to come in. But okay, so you can see, I mean, these are like dark brows, people. They're dark brows because they gotta be, all right? Like, don't be shy with the makeup. It's gonna look weird up close. Uh, do I look weird? Do I look a little normal? No, I look weird. <laughs> Like, of course I look weird. It's, it's fine, it's fine. Everybody's gonna look the same way. So even like, it's funny actually, uh, with the tan, it was the same kind of conversation that I had. I remember, um, so I, I competed with NFF, uh, the Natural Fit Federation, my first year. And they were like, uh, sorry, one second actually. I'm gonna use this Anastasia Beverly Hills eye primer. It's like a little sample I got, perfect. These sample stuff from Sephora, perfect for travel makeup and for like a little, fitting a little bag like that. Um, but anyways, I remember the the owner of NFF saw me and it was my first time putting on tan. I did the DIY pro tan. <laughs> uh, my husband and I, we like, he, he didn't really help me put it on, but like he was there while I was putting it on and he was like, oh my gosh, that's so dark. And I was like, I know. I was like, this is like, this has got to be enough. And I put like one coat of pro tan on. And if you've ever seen st like the stage tans, they're dark. Well, I didn't have a concept. I had a concept because I'd been to a show before, but like on me, I didn't have a concept. And so anyway, I went to check-ins and they were like, girl, like I, like he he's really dark skinned. He's like, if I need to put on two to three coats, <laughs> you definitely need to put on like way more than you've got on right now. And I was, that kind of put it in pers into perspective for me. I was like, oh, okay. So anyways, <laughs> I, I put on, put on more tan and it, it was all fine, but it was kind of hilarious because my husband and I, it just like cracked us up. So we were like, we thought it was enough, but it like really wasn't, really wasn't. Okay. So next what I'm gonna do here is, all right, so I go between two looks when it comes to the eyes for stage. I think that pinks look really pretty. So these are all the pinks that I use. This is the Naked Urban Decay Cherry Palette. Um, and then I will couple that with some sparkles, which is this um, one size Patrick Ta Eye Popper um, sparkly liquid stuff. Okay, yeah, it's really pretty, um, but I'm probably gonna go with my, like I'll do this if I wear my, my black suit with like some of the pink, the pink undertones, or if I go blue, blue with that pink, beautiful. Um, but I am probably gonna do red, most likely. It's just, it's the signature color at this point. Um, so I'm gonna do this palette here, which is the uh, Natasha Denona Glam Palette. I will say, this is an expensive palette. Did not love the price, but it is really, really nice. So we're going for it. Um, and then it has, a, I'll show you the, the sparkly topper that I use. 
Um, okay, let's answer another question here. Um, and I love this question actually. So my husband and I specifically discussed this this morning when we were running around in the car. Um, so, and before I, I do that, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in with a, a pretty light color probably. So I'll probably go with this transition color, like on this part of my eyelid, crease on the crease, um, and then center eyelid, I'll put on the sparkles, center eyelid, outer eyelid. I'm kind of, so I'm, the concept here, cause I'm not gonna go through all the colors I'm putting them on. It's like, I want light right here. I want super dark here and I want kind of a medium right here. And I don't want to go necessarily all the way to the brow, but I want to create kind of a nice, nice shape like that. Um, and then I'll put on the sparkly eyeliner, lashes, and then the eyes are, oh, eyes are almost done. I'll put on some white eyeliner in my uh, waterline. Okay, so here's the question. You don't show much social activity outside of family. Do you and your husband have any shared hobbies, friends, show social activities you do together? If so, how do you balance that with, your dis with the discipline of your lifestyle even when not in prep? I love you showing your life, but it seems so unsustainable. So my husband, <laughs> funny, he was like, he, it kind of caught him, it caught him off guard, but it didn't. So my husband and I are best friends, like best, best friends. And he and I, we, I feel like it's hard to describe. So I feel like society definitely puts a pressure on people that like, you need to go out and do stuff. You need to go out and like go to parties. You need to drink, you need to do all the things right? Like you need to start a family. You need to get married. We don't really fall into any of those preconceived notions. I would say, I mean, even with our, our marriage, we were like, we could just not get married and be okay. Like we love each other. That's what matters. I mean, we did, we eloped. So it was still a little unconventional, but we, I'm saying all this because it's very person independent, I would say, of what fills your cup and what makes you happy with your life. We are so incredibly happy with our life together and really fulfilled and we just, we just love it. Like we're, we're truly happy. Um, you know, we, we do together activities, like we, we love watching shows together. Um, I feel like that kind of sounds lame to people probably like, oh, TV shows, but like, we love watching TV shows and movies and like going to the movies and talking about those things. Um, we honestly love just talking to each other too. Like, I feel like that's a, something that people don't appreciate enough. Which like, oh, you just like, you like actually having conversations with other people, like or your significant other. Um, and we do have friends, but we're pretty, I would say selective about our friends. Like I personally am, I'm much more introverted than he is. And I, I just like, I'm very selective, I would say, of who I wanna pour my energy into because honestly, I get energy from like, just being alone. <laughs> like, I really like being alone. I like, I just like, I don't know, doing my own thing. Um, I like going after goals. I like, um, I like painting my nails, I like, cooking my prep food and non-prep food. Um, I like my job. I like my family. I like just being around them and spending time. Um, chatting with my friends, which again, I, I don't have a ton of friends, like a ton of close friends. I have a ton of acquaintances, like I have a ton of acquaintances, but I definitely am somebody who will keep people at arm's length. Um, and if that's not what makes you happy, you know, that's okay. It is truly okay. Um, you know, we're, we're allowed to have different things in our lives that make us fulfilled. And it depends on the state of your, like where you are in life too. Like, for example, I was much more like, I went out a lot in college, <laughs> especially the first like couple years. 
went on a lot in college, but that just stopped really fulfilling me. Um, so I, I transitioned and I started doing other things, you know, and like when my husband and I moved in together, I, like I, he definitely fills my social cup, right? Me, an introvert, like my husband fills that social cup for me. Um, so I don't feel the need, nor do I have the desire to like go out and do a ton of extracurriculars, I would say. Um, but again, to, to each their own. And no, we're, we're not super social people um, when it comes to like going out and partying. Like we love to have a nice conversation with somebody. Um, and we do with the people in our lives. But I also, something else that I'll say, remember that YouTube and Instagram is just what people want to show you. It's, that's all. It's not their whole life. Um, it can be like, it. it's what they want you to see. And honestly, I don't like filming around my family. I don't like filming around my friends. Like I've got plenty of friends who are probably like, yeah, they know I have YouTube channels, but they're probably like, huh, like actually like, does it put me in her vlogs maybe or whatever. It's cause I, I will genuinely forget if I'm around people. Like I'm just enjoying the time and that is so on the back burner, just not really a thing. So that's that, um, to each their own. It, to me, this is very a very sustainable lifestyle. And it's funny cause I asked my husband, I was like, what do you think? Like, I think this, this is sustainable. He's like, he's like, this is just what you do. Like this, this is just it. I was like, yep, nailed it, nailed it, hubby. So there's the answer to that. And what's sustainable for me may not be sustainable for you or depending on where you are in life, it might not be sustainable for you. Like this would not have been sustainable for me 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I was like trying these fat burner pills from GNC, trying to lose weight. And I was like, I couldn't run a mile. Like I was just a mess. Like in terms of knowing what to do, like fitness wise. So me counting macros at that point or like lifting weights, that wasn't gonna happen. Okay, so I've got some eyeshadow on. I probably need to make it darker, honestly. Uh, yeah, I think I need to put a few more layers of depth in there. So it's, it's gotta be drama. Like I said, you need all the drama. So I'm gonna Oh no, I just had a boo-boo. Be right back. Okay, I don't even know how that happened, but Natasha Denona is, is the real MVP here because <laughs> even though I dropped it, um, we're still all good. I'm gonna try to turn on some lights here. A little more light. Sorry, I feel like this is really dark. Okay, I think it's a little better now. But yeah, Natasha Denona's little eyeshadow things, I thought they were just gonna explode, but they actually are magnetic and they just popped out. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. I did this in the last video, didn't I? I did something kind of wild where I like dropped stuff. So, oh boy. Is that like a prep thing or a me thing? I'm not quite sure. But yeah, so finishing up that question, is my lifestyle unsustainable in that I go to bed at 8.30 and wake up at the same time every day and I don't do a ton of social activity. Um, it depends. Is it, uh, is it sustainable for you? Maybe, but maybe not. Um, is it sustainable for like what society says is sustainable? No, no, it's not. Um, because society says that we need to go out and drink and party and let loose and have food that's not not good for our bodies and isn't nourishing and doesn't make us feel good but hey it's but it's social like it's normal so yeah like and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that either but what i am saying is like don't be afraid to do what makes you happy like it doesn't matter what other people think or what other people deem as normal, because that is such a relative term. Sustainable is so very relative. Okay, so I think this is better now. I am gonna put a little bit of eyeshadow down here um, to make my eyes pop a little, but first I'm gonna show you guys this. So this is the 
other sparkly that I was talking about. So this is the Patrick Star Eye Popper. This is in the color Pea House. So see here, I'll just do it on the camera here. Isn't that nice? Like I put it all the way over here and then I'll just like blend it into like the, yeah, you can see, okay, good. Uh, into like the crease kind of area and into the outer lid. You can just start like dotting it and it'll, it'll be fine. And as long as you have some light color under it, it works out pretty well. So yeah, just gives you that little pop. So, hey. And again, I'll show you guys the finished product in better light. I'm sorry, this is not very good light, but it's what we're working with right now. Um, but okay, let's go on to another question. Thoughts on kids and when, fence sitter here looking for help since I am ex I am similarly an introvert who loves alone time. Oh, kids, okay. Um, yeah, so my husband and I, we've talked about kids. We're also not dead set on kids. We, and you guys are gonna be the first to know on the social medias, I think. I've talked to friends and some family about this, but, um, what I see happening is after this competition season, I'm going to take a little bit of a break and my husband and I are going to try for kids. Um, and what I feel very uh, like overly aware about is the possibility that kids aren't an option. I don't know why, but like from a very young age, I've always felt like maybe kids aren't gonna be possible for me. I have no idea why, I have no, I, no reason to think that, but that's always been a fear of mine. Um, and honestly, like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get let down. Um, I'm also not sold, like, I, I want kids. It's like, if, it, if it's meant to happen, it will happen. But at the same time, like, if it doesn't happen, I'll be okay. Because I, like I said, I, my husband and I are truly happy with where we are right now in our lives and just, just everything, so. You know, that, that being said, we'd be okay either way, but we do think that we want them. So if it happens, it happens, is the bottom line. We'll see. Um, okay, now doo -doo -doo, you can see, I put a, I'm trying to blend it a little bit more up here. I'll do that in a second, but I'm taking this little brush and I'm gonna put just a little under that lash line. So it's kind of like, a pseudo eyeliner. I don't want to go crazy with the eyeliner down there because I don't personally like that look on me. I feel like it just, like my eyes don't pop nearly as much, but I am going to try to blend it in to this over here. Next question. Do you have a sense of what helps you stay so disciplined, both related to prep and not, life experiences, daily habits, etc. How have you hardwired this? So like I mentioned like 10 years ago, um, <laughs> was different. Like I was not, you know, this whole fitness thing and like discipline and all that, it's a journey. Like I didn't just start like liking healthier nourishing foods. No, I used to like be so uncontrolled around like cookies and sweets and, and stuff like that. Like I couldn't pass up anything free. I mean, it was just like, I would just like lose control around food a lot of the time, just, just for no reason. Um, yeah, I definitely, I was definitely that girl that ate like a pint of Ben and Jerry's after eating like a full, full on meal. No problem, didn't think twice about it uh, until, you know, my, my weight started creeping up and I was like, ooh, I remember seeing a, a single picture of me at, from a dating event in college where I was like, oh God, I was like, that's me. Um, so I've always been pretty used to being decently thin and eating pretty much whatever I wanted. Um, so that was a real wake up call for me of like, okay, you better get your stuff in check. Uh, and I used to have to convince myself to get on the treadmill to like exercise and like try to run. Oh, and I would only be able to watch my favorite TV show during that time. So, I mean, it's just a journey. So honestly, giving yourself grace and time, that's literally been a 10 year period that I've been into fitness in some way, shape or form. And yeah, I mean, it, it's like it's like building blocks. I would say you need to just not not put so much pressure on yourself. It's little habits. And I would start with things like, and by the way, I'm just kind of cleaning up under my eye. I think this went a little too far down. 
So I'm just, again, cleaning that up. And then next I'm gonna do eyeliner and then um, my lashes, which actually the eyeliner I'm gonna use is magnetic eyeliner for the lashes. Um, and then I'll do the waterline. So I'll show you guys that real quick. So this velour, velour, um, those are the eyelashes I have as well. And I don't know which eyelashes I'm gonna do. Um, I guess I'll just do these big ones for, for now. I'm gonna try to kind of do it in the mirror, but also show you guys. Um, but okay, so talking about going back to the habits conversation, um, it's building blocks over time. Like you just can't expect yourself to be perfect. I would start with little things like, hey, well, just make sure you're drinking enough water. Um, and then next, like make sure you're getting enough steps in the day. Like set, set, set a step goal and, and start going. Um, when you're ready, I would up level and go with a coach. Um, Cause that I think was a huge benefit to me when I started working with a macros coach um, and then a physique coach. And literally I have such a long journey <laughs> with this stuff, but I wouldn't have it any other way. So yeah, that is my advice. Um, the way I got to how I am, it's 10 years in the making. Um, and I, I know some people are like, oh, it's like robotic, I can't do that. But like, I don't know, when you are enjoying your lifestyle, and that's what, that's what it is. It's like making it a lifestyle of like, you know, you're feeling good, you're, you're understanding the benefits to your body, like you're recognizing it. And it's like now, I'm like, okay, like I could just, I could not go to bed at 8.30 every night, but I know that's not gonna make me feel good. And even after I stop competing, I will probably keep doing something similar. I think you just gotta understand why you're doing stuff and, and how it's making you feel and have a deeper, a deeper why as well. Okay, so let that dry a little bit. This is not my best work, but I'm also like, I'm like, okay, I don't wanna spend forever doing this. <laughs> so with these velour lashes, oh, I just ripped some lashes out. I'm telling you guys, I'm, this is, this is a trial run for a reason, isn't it? Um, okay, but while I do this, I'll answer the next question and try to put on these eyelashes, which by the way, it's like really cool that these just like will pop on. There. Yeah, oh, I should have put mascara. I had to put mascara on before. <laughs> hold, hold the phone. Again, this is why we're practicing. Anyways, you don't have to put a lot of mascara. It's just to get the color on basically. Now do you try to go with lashes that aren't like too incredibly long to where they put overcast on my face. But yeah, it's gonna look a lot better now that I have my um, mascara on. Okay, and again, I'll show you guys in the light in just a second, um, cause I am almost done. I'm just gonna do my lippies here and then see if I need any final touches. So for lips, my favorite, is this Kat Von D KVD Lolita color. Vinyl lip cream, and this is the, these are the, the <laughs> lip liner. It's a lip liner. But okay, let's answer the last, some of the last questions here. I saw in one of your YouTube videos that you take off your watch for cardio. Is there a reason for that? So yes, I take off my Fitbit uh, because I don't want my steps to count toward my cardio. Those are separate variables, so. 10,000 steps, 30 minutes of cardio. Bruh, this is not going well. My lip liner just broke off. The struggle bus is so real. I guess talking and filling in lips is also hard, so one second. Okay, better. Um, but yeah, so anyways, steps and cardio are separate. Um, I remember, you mentioning that for the last year or so, you dropped the weight you were using in the gym to focus more on Lionel's connection. Uh, in general, how much did you lower the weight? Was it difficult to let go of using heavier weights? Um, so yeah, that's been really important. Uh, it depends on how much I've lowered the weights. It's just to where I feel it really well um, and I can focus on form and then I slowly go up from there. So I mean like hip thrust, for example, went down a lot. Like I took it way down and focused way more on time under tension and making sure my form was like spot on. 
Uh, so I was doing probably like, you know, like 250 and then I dropped to like 145. So, and then you rebuild from there. So you can still get back up to your 250, but like feeling it much, much better. Okay, lips. Um, and now to do, I'll finish off the last few questions here. How's the new walking pad? If you didn't know, I have a, a new treadmill. Love it, it like folds on top of itself. So far, thumbs up, but the support is like out of like London or like somewhere else and it's kind of weird. I don't know, I'm still, I don't wanna give like a full full review. So far it's so good, but I just, I'm still a little skeptical. Actually, I'm gonna do a little more brightening under here while I answer the last question and then show you guys the final product in the actual light because it's looking real crazy right now. Yeah, like crazier than even I would expect. I forgot to do my uh, water line, which I'll show you guys. Um, so last question here that I'm gonna answer in this video. Advice for fitting in, uh, fitting in with OS for people who work 12 hour shifts. Your dedication is inspiring. Thank you so much. Um, so for working at like workouts, workouts, <laughs> got it. Boy, took me a second. Um, any advice for work, fitting in workouts for 12 hour shifts? Um, you know, I'm probably not the best person to answer that question, but my friend Christy, who is uh, a nurse, definitely would be a great one to answer this. Um, I know she is so freaking dedicated. Uh, oh my gosh. So, I mean, she makes it work and she has two little kids and is like momming so hard while doing all this stuff. So, um, yeah, I think it's a matter of like probably putting your workouts in times that's sustainable, like maybe not doing like a, a workout on a 12 hour shift day. Uh, maybe focusing those more on like days where you have a lighter schedule or putting your light workouts on those days um, where you're either not spending as much time in the gym or it's like just a lift that maybe you don't have to like go be as concentrated for or like present for. And what I mean is like, for example, like if you've got a um, strong point in your physique where it's like, oh yeah, I, you know, my back is great. Like I don't really need to grow my back that much, but you've got like a, a maintenance back workout in there. Uh, I think that's okay at that point to like, you know, use like work with your coach and figure out what the best move is there, which is, you know, maybe again, like, do workouts that require a little bit less of you on those 12 hour shift days. Like if you have to work out on those days. Okay. So I know again, this looks a little crazy and now I'm gonna go in with this. This is a Sephora con colorful crayon 12 hour wear um, in this like white color. So I put the, I put it literally in my eye, eye line, my water line. And it just like, it looks so nice. And I put it all the way over. And guys, I'm finally almost done. This definitely took uh, about as long as I figured it would because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so rusty. But I'm so glad I did this and thank you guys for keeping me company. Hope this was helpful for you. And okay, now I'm gonna show you guys the final product in some actual good light. Okay, and like, <laughs> I'm a mess. So trick. <laughs> Done, gone. Now I'll show you and be able to smile without getting lipstick on my teeth. <sighs> okay, you can kind of see it here. So obviously I've got the, the lighter under here. I've got the sparklies going on. The lashes are too big. I wouldn't probably wear that, but this would be much more obviously like in line with the color of my skin. So, so you have a little contour lips which got a little messed up there. It's okay. This is, this is just the practice run. But yeah, I feel like the lashes are just too big in this situation. But yeah, it looks, looks a little crazy, I know, but stage makeup is a little crazy. Just close-ups. Okay, well, this wraps up today's video. Hope you enjoyed. I'll put in actually a clip at the end here about how check-ins go on Tuesday with Jamie and 
I'll catch you guys in the next one. So the next one will be, oh my gosh, okay, this is gonna be my five weeks out video. The next one will be my four weeks out video. Oh, crazy, okay. Hello, it is a couple days later, Tuesday, check-in day. I'll put my check-in stuff here. Um, so here's the update. I was down 1.1 pounds this week from last week. And actually on my Instagram, I put 0.9, but I got that confused. Um, down 1.1 pounds, so hit 116.8. And checked in with Jamie. She's like, okay, we're, we're dropping pretty quickly. Um, and I don't want you to lose your muscle density. Like, I just, I wanna start reversing you. Um, I think like, and I'm, I'm gonna take some pictures for her this weekend with like, you know, after a couple of carb meals with a little bit of a pump and show her like what my glutes are looking like with better lighting. So that's the main concern at this point. But yeah, so we're starting reversing, which is kind of crazy. Again, like four weeks and four days out. So we're just gonna maintain this look for a little bit and see where we go. Oh, and so she increased food and decreased cardio by five minutes every day, so. All right, Interest I, I didn't expect that this week. I thought we'd have one more week of pushing at least, but all right, so. Let's see how things go. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one to let you guys know how my first week of reversing is going. And that doesn't mean that we won't like diet again within this prep, but for this phase, we are reversing a little bit. So anyways, okay. Catch you in the next one.